Hmm, so what exactly is a Nova? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I actually wanted to answer the simple question. What is a Nova? Today we're going to try to recreate this using Universe Cyborg Square, and you're going to learn a little bit more about what Nova are, and how this term actually was coined uh, a few hundred years ago. Welcome to What The Math, and enjoy the video. <laughs> And so for this video, I actually wanted to talk about not the more common topic, which is of course the supernova, which I'm about to initiate by increasing the mass of our sun and then resetting it and boom. So this would be a supernova, a very, very, very large, very massive, very powerful explosion that often uh, creates a lot of new elements and uh, recycles a lot of new material or I guess old material creating new stuff. We are actually, all of us, are a result of a very large supernova that happened something like 4.6 to 4.7, possibly 5 billion years ago. Now, we're not talking about supernova. We're going to remove the word super and talk about just nova. And the word nova was actually coined by the famous astronomer Tycho Brahe, who actually uh, wrote a book about a supernova he observed, and he called it the Nova Stella. Now, the Nova Stella it means a new star in uh, in Latin, but somehow, uh, I guess because people are lazy, we kind of started referring to these really bright objects, the new stars in the sky as Nova. Now, until about uh, early 20th century, Nova and Supernova were actually interchangeable because people thought they were the same thing. But later on, we realized that they're not the same thing, and as a matter of fact, we're going to delete this Supernova right here if we can. And I guess we can't, but anyway, uh, we're going to start a completely new scenario here, and I'm going to show you what Nova actually is. So, Supernova may occur when a white dwarf, like for example, Sirius B, which is the closest white dwarf to our um, home planet, uh, goes, uh, boom, basically explodes if it acquires what's known as the Chandrasekhar limit of 1.39 masses of the sun, and boom. So that's a supernova. It got destroyed, got completely eliminated, and it created a very, very large explosion. Now, what exactly is a nova? So to do uh, a nova simulation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, a, a, I'm going to create a binary system. Now, the most famous of these, or one of the most famous of these binary systems, is what you see on the screen right now. This is actually RS Opiakai, and it's a star that's approximately 5,000 light years away from us, or I guess a binary star, where one of these stars is um, a white dwarf, and one of the stars is um, a giant. And when you have this kind of a relationship, things can get very, very interesting. Uh, now, this star actually um, has gone nova, not once, not twice, but at least six times in the last uh, 150 years. As a matter of fact, the last time we observed the very, very large nova explosion from this particular region was in 2006. Now, let's actually see what's happening here, and how exactly does this happen? How can you actually have multiple nova from the same um, region, from the same star? Let's pick a, a giant here. I'm going to maybe pick something not so large, like for example, this guy right here, Alfred. It's um, a relatively large giant, uh, about three times uh, the mass of sun, but not super, super large. So here's the sun in comparison. It is relatively okay in terms of size. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a binary system. I'm going to go in here, click on binary and put Sirius B, which is the white dwarf right next to it. And watch what happens. Now, I've talked about the effects of so-called Roche lobe in one of the previous videos. And you may want to actually look at it, or at least watch um, through parts of it, just to see what exactly is going to happen here. Now, there's stuff flying off uh, the star. What is happening? Essentially, Series B is such a massive and such a dense star, even though it's so, 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 so tiny. Um, as a matter of fact, the density here is over 2.2 million grams per centimeter cube, whereas the density here is only about 0.03, or actually 0.00003 uh, grams per centimeter cube. So it's essentially a much, much denser object. Even though the mass here is a little bit less, the density um, of this uh, white dwarf, even though this star here is a little bit less massive than uh, Alf Alphard, uh, the density of Series B is creating these really interesting effects. Now, this is related to what I've mentioned before, the Roche lobes. So, as the uh, mass of this object falls outside of its Roche lobe, it starts losing the mass, 
And guess what happens to that mass that I just lost? Well, it's of course going to start accumulating around Series B. As a matter of fact, Series B, or I guess any White Dwarf in this case, um, would start acquiring this mass and it's going to start sort of uh, accumulating in accretion disks around it. So here we go, it's going to pass again, acquire a little bit of mass, and now if you were to sort of create this kind of accretion disk, it may look something like this. We're just going to place random stuff here. Let's actually maybe do a bit of a different color. And so here we go. So there's a bit of an accretion disk here. And this accretion disk is essentially, well, it's obviously underrepresented. It should be much, 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 much larger. As a matter of fact, it would be huge. It would be massive uh, orbiting around Sirius. And we can kind of, I guess, recreate this by adding a little bit more on the outskirts here. And boom. All right. Uh, so this accretion disk is essentially the hydrogen and possibly helium, but mostly hydrogen that was captured from this large, supermassive giant, uh, or I guess somewhat massive giant next to Sirius B. Now, as this happens, with time over uh, over and over as basically that creates more and more gas as this grows in size as it becomes larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, and larger eventually um it sort of starts to get really dense and because the star is so hot and because it has such a high gravity a lot of this material ends up on its surface uh, this white dwarf will actually receive a lot of this hydrogen right here on the surface and it's going to start getting squished and getting hotter and hotter and at some point when it reaches a temperature of about 20 million degrees it's going to kind of go boom but not very big boom it's going to explode and create a nuclear uh, explosion but not a supernova now the best way i found uh, to kind of represent this in the game is by basically uh, recreating a new white dwarf and then, very nonchalantly, uh, colliding a bunch of planets with it. Now, this is not a very realistic rep representation of what's going on here. And to be to make it more realistic, let's actually add a few uh, rings here, just as an accretion disk. And now we're just going to wait for these Marses to get to Series B and uh, create a bit of an explosion. Now, when the um, nuclear reaction begins, when the, the material gets very, 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 very dense, um, it will create a flash, a hydrogen flash. And this hydrogen flash is going to be relatively bright. It's going to make the star about 12 times brighter than it usually is. And, uh, well, it's up to 12 times. 12 is usually the maximum. But you can see, because this star is so dense and so massive, Mars is basically being spaghettified, even though it's kind of still far away from the, from the actual um, star. And so here we go. It's going to basically create these very bright explosions. And I'm just doing this just so that my um, white dwarf actually acquires a little bit of explosive side to it. And so it actually starts looking a little bit brighter. Uh, but essentially, hopefully, this will work. Let's see if this works. And with all of the Marses now inside uh, the White Dwarf, I think we're going to see a bit of the change in the luminosity. So this is essentially um, the change in the luminosity that we would observe uh, if there was a nova. Basically, if suddenly this star had uh, all of this hydrogen exploding on the surface. And on top of uh, the hydrogen exploding here, a lot of this material would actually get thrown out into the um, outer solar system and basically away into outer space. So a lot of this stuff would actually get thrown out and thrown away into the outer space and create this very beautiful uh, picture that you see in front of you right now. So this is one of the uh, very common examples of a nova. Now, as you can see, the, uh, the Martian collision here created a very, very, very bright sort of surface on, um, on the surface of Sirius B, on the surface of this white dwarf. And so this is kind of what um, a nova would be like, except of course the fact that uh, a lot of this material would then be released, and we're going to do this by just kind of just erasing it by clicking this button right here. And so there you go, there's a very bright new object that's about uh, 2 to about 12 times brighter than it was, and it will stay bright uh, for quite a few days, possibly even a few weeks. And this is where we get different sort of nova types, from fast nova to slow nova. But essentially, this is how nova usually happen. So it's basically, it's a, a temporary increase in brightness of a, um, a binary star that is usually caused by the very, very large um, hydrogen explosion, or basically nuclear explosion, on the surface of a white dwarf. So this is kind of what you're observing right now. 
Now, this will eventually subside and it will return back to being a white dwarf, but because it's still orbiting that uh, gas giant, but because it's still orbiting that uh, star that we had it orbiting before, it will do this again. So here is the Alpha again, and here's the Series B. So with time, uh, you know, with, with some time, it will happen again. So every binary system that has a white dwarf relatively close to uh, its giant friend will actually have quite a lot of Nova. As a matter of fact, we've observed uh, something like 54 Nova in the last 150 years. So they are quite common and um, it seems that on average, uh, close to about 40 Nova happen in our Milky Way alone. We don't always see them, but they do happen quite a lot. So this is quite a common phenomenon. It's actually uh, sometimes even possible to see with your naked eye, uh, but it's clearly not as massive and not as explosive as the supernova that I'm about to initiate by changing the age of this particular star to, let's just say, 4,000 or 40,000 million years or 40 billion years and then going boom oh that didn't work how about this ha huh, that totally didn't work either well that's not good maybe if i do it again and again and maybe again nope this is not happening well we might as well switch to our beautiful um white dwarf and do this this always works this is the chandra zecker limit about which i've previously talked in one of the videos and anyway, so that's really all I wanted to say in this video. I just wanted to show you what Nova are and what uh, they are not. And they're not supernova, so they're quite different. They're a lot less energetic and a lot uh, less visible as well. But scientists today actually think that we might be able to use them as um, what we know as the uh, space candles. Basically, we can use their brightness to determine distances to various objects, because that's how we usually detect uh, distances to different galaxies. But you, we usually use supernova for that. But it's possible to also use Nova as well. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video. And possibly even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.